Good morning everybody and welcome to the video and thanks for coming over to watch. Now for me this is not a Saturday morning, this is a Wednesday morning. And I couldn't sleep at all so I had to come in early to the sale room and I'll tell you why. Only 48 hours before public viewing day, 48 hours before we're supposed to be online, the sale room looks like this today. So we're obviously well behind and there's there's often many reasons for this, like if, if there's a bank holiday so we have a Monday off, or in this instance, if the antique sale is just around the corner, we'll spend a lot of time working upstairs, downstairs gets a little bit behind. Uh, and there are times where you think we're just not going to get done, we're not going to get sorted within, within uh, the allotted working time, and this feels like one of those times, as I said, only 16 working hours to get it ship shape. And now the aim of this channel, Inside a Family Auction House, is to show you behind the scenes of what it's like working inside a family auction house. And that's warts and all. Now this is a particularly warty day, so I, I don't know if we're going to get done in time, but uh, we'll see. We've never failed yet. Now you'd be forgiven for thinking this is disorganised. It's not disorganised, not at all. It's just in completely the wrong shape. Now the question is, is 16 hours enough time to get this place in the right sort of shape. So Saturday morning, I'm here back at work. Did we make it on time? Of course we did. We always do. Everybody works super, super hard, so thumbs up to everybody. Got the sale online. But we were struck with some kind of weird man flu, so everybody was really poorly and morale was pretty low, but everybody pushed on through and we got the sale online. So my pick for this sale is this Spode Lancaster pattern dinner and tea service with these lovely rich cobalt blue and gilt borders. It's really a, a cut above most sort of dinner and tea wares, what you'd find in an ordinary general sale. And it's a real popular pattern. It was first introduced in 1925 and actually discontinued in 2009. So there's only a finite amount of this porcelain available. And as I said, it's really popular. So as ever, supply and demand really nudges up the price. It's a pattern very similar to that commissioned by the White Star Line for Titanic by the Spode factory. And the vendor also tells me that Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II has this service. I did a little digging around, but couldn't find any evidence of that. But who knows? It certainly is a fine service. Now, because of this gilding, you can't bung these plates in the microwave or dishwasher, so it's hand wash only. So they're probably only ever going to be used for formal dining and display as well. There's a pair of lovely tureens with those artichoke moulded finials and a nice sauce boat as well. So good important key pieces to the service are there. And there's quite a few pieces. We've got a catalogue estimate of three to five hundred. I notice there's already an online bid at three hundred, so there's going to be no problem getting that away within the price bracket. Now Spode made a few variations on this pattern. You get a leather green, a basic white, and there's also a crimson. Now we actually have two lots of Spode in the sale, and we have a crimson variety as well. This is the wish list feature. So whatever item in the sales had the most interest online. So it pushes me to look at things that I wouldn't necessarily ordinarily look at. And it's for a piece of furniture this week. It's this nest of three are called tables. Now they're actually known as the 354 nest. I never knew that, but look, to, look them up online. You can still get them at the factory. The 354 nest, and that's because that's the product number. Quite a dull and boring name, but they're affectionately known as the pebble nest. And that's because of the way those tops are each shaped. Now the Ercole factory was started by the Italian furniture designer, Lucian Ercolani. That sounds made up, doesn't it? I know, but, uh, but it's true and his mass-produced post-war minimalist furniture was exactly what the nation was after. With these very simple lines, you can see that this pebble nest is a design classic already and will probably stand the test of time for centuries to come, I'm guessing. Now the only downside to our nest is its colour, this sort of dark chestnut colour, not currently favoured with today's trends. People much prefer lighter woods. They're called to a clear lacquer, uh, the Golden Dawn is a little bit darker, somewhere in the medium range, and those two would, would have made quite a, a splash at auction. But these darker colour tables, I'm guessing, are going to make one to two hundred pounds. Okay, so a new feature this week, one that I really wanted to call questions and answers, but nobody really ans asks any questions on this channel, mostly just make comments, so uh, we'll call it comments for now. Uh, and the first one this week comes from... Graham Bell. 
And Graham says, first of all, another enjoyable video. You are capturing the excitement and uncertainty of auctions really well. So thanks very much for that, Graham. That's very nice of you. It's nice to hear those things. And he also goes on to say, in view of your change to Monday sales, I wonder if it might be useful to explain how commission bids work and when you bring in telephone bidders. For example, if you have multiple bidders, where do you start? Lowest bid, bottom estimate, room bids, etc. I've seen several different approaches at auctions. Well, thanks very much, Graham. We'll try and get to the root of that. But in order to do so, I'm just going to give an overview of all the different methods of bidding. Now, the first one is with a bidding card. That's the one we all know really well. You turn up at the sale, you register for the number, you have to bid live in person by catching the auctioneer's attention. Now, in my opinion, this is the best way. You've got most control. If, it, if you decide to go to 100 and it goes a little bit more, you've got the decision then. You can take the decision to go on that extra bid on the day. So this is the best way, hands down. However, uh, as Graham said, we're moving our sales to Monday, so it might not be possible for you to get to our sale room on a, Sunday, on a Monday. Sorry. Uh, so the other method, the other old school method, is by way of commission bid. So you fill out one of these forms and we do the bidding for you. Now the major downside to that, uh, as we said with this one, you have more control. If you leave 100 on something and it makes 110, you haven't got it. You might have gone for it on the day, so you'll fail to get it. So that's a downside. The other thing, a lot of people are a little bit scared to leave commission bids with auctioneers because they don't trust them. Now, I give you as much honesty as possible on this channel, so I can tell you, you can bid with us with confidence. It's my viewpoint that if, if, if we were to take advantage of your trust, you leaving us bids, you'll never come again. So basically what that means is, let's say you leave a hundred pounds commission bid. If the item makes 50, you'll buy it for 50. But as we said, if it makes 110, you won't buy it. So that's those two old school methods. One other old school method is by the telephone. So you can register a telephone bid, we'll give you a call, on the phone and we can relay what's happening in the auction you can decide to bid. Not super practical, you can't of course bid on the wholesale on the phone. We have a limit of £200 so the estimate has to be above £200 in order for you to be able to get a telephone bid. Now of course with examples like the Beatles poster last time had an estimate of 15 to 30 with a very strict ruling on that you wouldn't be allowed a telephone bid. So it's not as clear cut as that. I mean, if it's obvious we've made a mistake, we'll know that from the feedback in the sale and you will be able to get a phone bid on, on items like that. So that's another option. Uh, the last option is the good old trusty internet. This is the, the sort of the new method, uh, the one that's really, that people are really flocking to and enjoying and, and that's, that's really great. You can bid from the comfort of your own home. So that's, that's perfect. The downside to this one is you pay an extra premium and since the 1st of November, which we mentioned in an earlier video, I'll link that above, you actually pay 4.95% extra if you bid online. So you can bid online live on the internet, so during the auction as it's happening, or you can leave what they call an auto bid. This is on the saleroom.com. You can leave an auto bid. That's the same as a commission bid, but it's through this method. So the downside is you pay the 4.95%. The upside is if you don't trust the auctioneer, you can put that amount in and the auctioneer never gets to know that figure. Now that being said, by and large, auction rooms will always give priority to people bidding by these three methods as opposed to this method. So if you've left a commission bid of 50 this way, your friend leaves a commission bid of 50 this way and it makes 50, this person will win. Because we don't know what that amount is, so we stagger the bid in so it ends at 50 on this form. Hope that makes sense. I know it's fairly complex. So let's try and get to the root of Graham's comment, which is essentially if you've got multiple commission bidders, where do you start? So one thing about auctioneering, you really want to be as efficient as possible with time. You have a lot of people here in the room, you have people online who are there to make a living. So for them, it's serious. They're not there for a day out, they want to get on. And that's the same you know, a lot for us, everybody wants to get on for their Sunday lunch. So you want to keep your lots per hour as high as possible. But also, of course, giving enough time for each lot. So with that in mind, let's say you've got three commission bids. One of 20, one of 40, one of 80. So 20, 40, 80. So you don't start with the, the bottom bid. There, there'd be no point. You know you've, you've definitely got over, over 40. So the 20 is gone. 
the 40 is beaten because we know we've got the 80. So the natural starting place there will be 45. The bottom two bids are gone. We've started with the second bidder of 45. If nobody else bids, he wins it. And it's really as simple as that. It's just, just basic mathematics. You just got to uh, calculate where is the next natural increment. Uh, if there's a telephone bidder, generally I like to leave them right till the very end. And that's simply because the, the communication is a little bit slower. You've got to relay to the porter, who relays to the bidder, who relays back to the porter, who relays to you. So that slows things down. So I, I like to try and keep those there for the end. Also adds that bit of suspense in the room. You can hear that uh, muttering away on the phone. So the, the room are always very, very aware that there's a phone bidder. So um, yeah, get any commission bids done. Bidding in the room is also much faster than the internet. So I prefer to get the bids out in the room first and then come to the internet. And as we said, then the phones. Things always find their natural level, of course, because there's only one person there that's willing to pay the highest price. So that's it for this Saturday. Join me next Saturday. I'm going to look at those three lots, the Spode Lancaster and the Urkel Pebble Tables. We'll see the auction footage and we'll see how we went on and what the estimates were like. As ever, I'm going to ask you to subscribe if you haven't done so already. Just click the link below and also like the video if you've enjoyed it and pass it on to your friends. And the last thing to mention, the Christmas special, which I keep talking about, that's going to be on YouTube on the 22nd of December. That's where Jamie, Dad and myself have challenged one another to spend £50 in the antiques world out there and to sell here at auction. See who makes the most profit. Now, all the money goes to charity, to Rain Rescue and Bluebell Wood. Now, last week I gave a link to our Just Giving page to Rain Rescue. We've already had two very generous donations. We're up to £20. We'd obviously like to get it more, so please head over there and donate if you can. I'm going to link uh, to the other Just Giving page to Bluebell Wood this week. So just in the description of this video, you'll see two links. One for the Bluebell Wood Just Giving page and one for Brain Rescue. So please head over there and make a donation. Hope you have a really great week and I'll see you next Saturday. Thank you.